Hi friends, it's Gazit Chaya, and I am checking in. I'm wearing ice pack right now. I have been um, having hot flashes for about a week, and I would say it's less of a flash and more of a like hotness <laughs> that's been happening. Um, and I had just got off the um, phone with my doctor, and we had a, another follow up. Um, because I gave the testosterone another try and um, I timed it. I've been having really bad um, PMS symptoms and um, so I timed it this time exactly when I stopped bleeding which is um, like to ovulation which is usually my um, best time of the month and when I feel like the healthiest and strongest and so I did two and a half weeks of um, two pumps a day of the testosterone gel. And um, I really feel like I gave it a very good try in the best um, circumstances for me. And I, I just don't feel like I want to keep taking it. Um, I will admit that one of the reasons is because I have been learning a lot about something called polyvagal theory, um, which has to do sort of on like how we um, create safety in our nervous systems and how like healing and um, like immunity and um, growth and all these things that we really um, need uh, are only possible when your um, nervous system is in the safety zone and for so many of us we spend all of our time in the fight or flight um zone and so uh one of the therapies that um has been developed by dr stephen portis who uh was the one who coined the term polyvagal theory is called the safe and sound protocol and it's where you like take out the lower notes of um someone's vocal register and you just like focus on these sort of like high higher pitched like sort of like um someone singing a lullaby to a baby and I had a moment of like I already wasn't feeling great about the testosterone but I have a mo moment of just realizing that like being able to be a source of like safety and calming um to my kiddo and to the kids that I work with is really really important to me and I just felt like I that would that helps me to feel more positively about my higher voice um and and that was one of the main shifts that I was really interested in was a lower um vocal tone and so it sort of helped me make peace with like why I can feel okay about my higher vocal tone um and um not that there's like anything inherently wrong with lower vocal tones I know that that can be also very comforting soothing and it's not saying anything about that it just sort of helped me make peace with the one thing that was um, making me want to keep going on the testosterone even though it wasn't feeling good um so I have decided to stop that completely, and I have finally gotten um, my doctor to agree that I am in perimenopause because I'm having these hot flashes and I'm having, like, really bizarre. I don't, I literally don't know because I don't have a scale, but it's either that I'm gaining weight or maybe that was related to the testosterone, I don't know, or that I have, like, extreme bloating or extreme body dysmorphia when the hormones change with my um PMS and then while I'm um actually bleeding but I felt like I had gained like 20 pounds um and I was feeling and this was related to the testosterone I was feeling just like my skin was really tight and like full like I was and I think that's what bloating is um just feeling like really like like a sausage in a tight casing. Um, and it was feeling so uncomfortable. Um, so I have been feeling that for like the whole time I was taking, well, it increased over the time I was taking the testosterone. And then I, I pretty much have stopped bleeding today or probably like tomorrow. Um, and I, I feel it just like I woke up today and it was like, just like a shift. It's just so crazy how, hormones affect us so significantly and 
I, last month, I felt like during the three days before my period and then during my whole period, I felt like I was like so exhausted, more exhausted than I've ever been in my life, like walking through molasses exhausted and just like brain foggy and just like so discouraged and hopeless about life. And then the day I stopped bleeding, it was like a switch went off and it just all went away and I felt like, oh, I'm like a regular person and I feel hopeful about the world and life is okay and my brain works and I can like walk and um, so weird. And then the same thing happened this month is that I've been feeling so awful and I had that super terrible hot flash um, two days before I started bleeding where I felt like I was just on fire inside and I felt like I wanted to eat like a dozen donuts and I felt like I wanted to just smash everything and like I hated everyone and the world is terrible and hopeless and nothing's ever going to get better <laughs> um and was really just feeling like ugh, like life is too hard for the the whole um week of bleeding and then today I woke up and I'm like oh actually like, life is still hard and really, you know, there's a lot of things to be bummed about. But I feel completely different and, like, it's actually totally fine and I'm going to be fine and it's not that big a problem, which feels dramatic. And I feel like I lost 20 pounds, which, like, clearly I didn't lose 20 pounds between last night and this morning. It's not possible. But even I look completely different in the mirror. And I know that I have body dysmorphia like I have for a really, really long time. So I know that that's a real thing, but it's so weird because it seems so real. <sighs> I don't know. So in meeting with my doctor today, we were talking about the perimenopause symptoms and I was like, I know we did the blood work a couple of years ago and you said I wasn't really at the perimenopause point but I feel like I'm having these hot flashes. I'm having these mood swings. I'm having all this stuff. Oh, I've also been having like stomach aches, just nonstop stomach aches and a lot of like gas, like farting and burping, which I've never had before in my life. Um, and indigestion is like a whole, oh, and heartburn, which I only had at the very end of my pregnancy. So indigestion is like a big thing in perimenopause too. So I'm like, what is all this? And she's like, yeah, clinically speaking, you're in perimenopause and we can treat you as such. <clears throat> and I've been having unbelievably heavy periods, like bleeding, like gushing so much blood more than I've ever had in my life. And so she's like, let's talk about that if you feel open to it and I was like yes that's also this that's part of this whole conversation about hormones you know and um and she's like I would recommend the IUD which I had talked to a doctor before but like several friends said they didn't like them and I was just feeling like it wasn't worth trying but I found an article about trans men and IUD and how it can be really helpful for stopping your period and um, as birth control. Um, and I don't have a partner or, and I'm not sexually active, so I don't need birth control right now, but um, for stopping your period. And then my, my doctor was always ta also talking about how it could decrease the perimenopause symptoms and the PMDD, which is... Um, like really, really intense PMS. I forget what it stands for. So I found that article. And then I also found um, a video about how um, IUD can be used for in menopause and perimenopause. And I've linked both of those in the description. Um, the video is very like cisgender, like not inclusive at all. And she like refers to menstruating people as women. So don't watch that. Um, if that doesn't feel like a good, safe idea for you. Um, but I do want to consider this IUD idea. So basically there's two kinds of IUDs. One is copper and it doesn't have any hormones in it and it just stops, um, ovulation and then the other is um called there's several kinds there's like morena and kylena or something like that um they sound like disney characters to me <laughs> but um 
they have progesterone in them and they go into your, it like goes into your uterus and it releases a steady stream of progesterone. And, um, that like makes the lining of your uterus lighter. Um, and it stops ovulation. Um, and so it doesn't go in your whole body like um, like a birth control control pill does. And I took birth control before in my life, and it made me feel suicidal. So I knew that wasn't a good choice for me. But this just goes into your uterus, so it doesn't have that effect. Um, and it, one great thing is that has been um, shown to reduce the risk for uterine cancer, which my um, aunt just passed away from. So that was something that made me feel like that sounds good. Um, and it will pretty much stop my period. Like I'll have some spotting um, sometimes, but really, really light. And that sounds really nice because I've been bleeding so heavily. And also my doctor was saying I'm probably getting like more and more anemic from all this heavy bleeding, which affects energy, which I didn't think of. Um, I take iron every day, but even so. Um, so yeah, all that to say that I really want to consider it. And I guess you can also take like, um, well, for, for trans people who don't want a lot of estrogen in their system or want to be taking testosterone, this can be okay because it's just in your uterus and it's so little that it doesn't affect, like you can still take full testosterone dose and not have any like negative impacts of the progesterone. Um, so it's really good for that. And um, then, you know, at some point for me, since I'm not doing the testosterone anymore and I'm not concerned about limiting the estrogen, I could take like an estrogen um, tablet, I guess. I don't know as much about this, um, but it would also help with the um, perimenopause symptoms. So, oh, you know what I also want to link is there's this great new book um, called What Fresh Hell Is This? by um, I'm going to forget the author's name, but I'll put it in the description. Um, Heather Karina, I think. And um, they're a non-binary person. And so they write it in this beautiful way that's like super inclusive and not like women, 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 women um, the whole time. So that's great. Um, so I recommend that book. And so, yeah, I'm going to make an appointment. I'm going to talk about the IUD. I also looked... She, she said I could consider the Nuva ring as well, um, but it looks like there's a lot more side effects with that. And it's just the, the benefit is that the, you know, the IUD is like something that goes all the way up into your uterus and does have, it's like an invasive procedure and has risks in terms of like, you know, if it got dislodged or like poked a hole in your uterus or something. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't have as many like vaginal side effects, which the new ring sounds like it, you could have like infections and like, you know, discharge and you have a full period on the new ring and, um, just some other things that sounds like the new ring is just maybe not, I, I like, it would be worth having the invasive procedure in order to not have the other stuff that comes with the new ring. So I'm going to consider it. I made an appointment for next week to talk um, with the doctor who actually does the procedure and see if they think it, you know, would be a good fit and, and if I feel like it's a good fit and, um, maybe that would help. So just, um, trying to continue to figure out a right balance for me and, and how to feel, um, as authentic as possible and also as healthy as possible. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that it was really good um, over the course of taking the testosterone was that I was able to really just say like, hey, there's things that I wish I had. Um, like I wish I had a penis. I wish I did not have a vulva. Um, and that's not going to change even if I take testosterone. And there's just some grief that is important for me to feel around that and some acceptance about that. You know, I think that after the surgery, I was hoping that people would 
not interpret me as female all the time, um, that maybe they would have some hesitation um, or they would be like, oh, wait, what's going on here? But without fail, I am 100% of the time um, assumed to be um, a woman. And I think there's some just like grief I needed to process and some acceptance around like that is what it is. And we, you know, still are in an extremely binary society and, um, and I can't depend on other people's reactions to me or assumptions about me to help me to feel safe and, you know, authentic, that it is about me and that other people's you know, interpretations are not what's actually gonna help me feel whole. It's gonna be my acceptance and my um, trust in myself. Um, and so I was able to have just like some really big cries about that. Um, and this week, and just, you know, acknowledge that there is grief and that there can also be acceptance and that I want to continue to grow to be, you know, my most valuable and important source of validation to myself. Um, so I will update you with the next steps. I hope everyone is well. No news on my surgery healing is just sort of like the same it's just you know tingly kind of like dentist numb feeling it kind of feels like tape is on there like two big pieces of tape um otherwise it's all the same okay take care everybody